Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil mursalin. Nabina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man istanna wa da'a ila sunnatihi ila yawmiddin. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassilli amri. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Amma ba'd. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, inshallah, everybody is doing well. Uh, we begin everything everything by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Him and seeking refuge in Him from any errors or ignorance or misdeeds uh, that we've done um, any and protection uh, from uh, the the whispers of our own souls and the, the whispers of the, the cursed uh, Iblis, Shaitan, Satan, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us and, and put uh, blessings in, in what we learn and what we gain. Um, so as, um, as the sister mentioned, um, the topic for today, inshallah, is not taking tomorrow for granted. Um, and so we many times as human beings, we, we are a we're a habitual creation. Uh, we're a habitual creature, meaning that when we start to get to use, when we start getting used to something, we expect that that will continue to happen. We're people that build routines. Um, and, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The, the part of our, our, our nature is forgetfulness. And so that's why reminders and, and building in a, uh, a ritual of prayer and salah and having things happening at specific times during the day or during the month or during the year, um, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us um, to, to keep us, uh, uh, to keep our eyes on the, on the prize, on the right thing. And so we then as human beings get into this um, stage of expecting what we have from tomorrow, for what we have today to be there tomorrow. Um, and as we know, life is fragile. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, throughout the, the Quran teaches us that we, we, sh we don't know what to expect for tomorrow. So just because you have something today doesn't mean you're going to have something tomorrow. Um, and this becomes something very tough to, to, to comprehend until you taste it. Right. And that's why we have many ayat throughout the Quran, many verses throughout the Quran that tell us that in the verse that was uh, quoted in the in the flyer um, comes at the end of Surah uh, Luqman, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a, a person, a soul, and there are five ghaibs or five Things, five aspects of life that are unseen that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. One is the day of judgment, um, you know, what, what we're going to be able to um, have for tomorrow, meaning what risk, what um, sustenance, what bounty are we going to get for tomorrow? A person does not know where or when they're going to pass away. Um, these are all aspects of, of ghayb or of the unseen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps for himself. And so this is building within our psyche as believers that what you have today, you should take advantage of it, right? Don't squander the opportunity that you have for today. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam always teaches us that make sure that you don't do the same thing two days in a row always ensure that you have progressed or you have made uh, a difference from one day to another because you don't know breath that you have life um, or that you're able to do it, that you're in a state of health to do it, that you're, you know, that you have the same people around you or the same, you know, aspects or situation or circumstances around you to be able to achieve what you achieved in the day prior. And so this is, this is something critical for us as believers to, to truly comprehend. And, and it does become, um, once you get into a routine of life, uh, it becomes very difficult to break from it. And so sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to send us a shock to the system, a disruption, right? So COVID is a, is a huge disruption to the routine of life 
um, and it, it allows us to take a step back and, and, act, and, and look at the aspects of our lives that we have taken for granted for so long, right? Just the ability for us to see people, uh, the ability for us to walk outside without needing to cover our faces, uh, the need for us to, to have people over at our houses or go out for, for lunch or go grab a coffee or yeah, the simple mundane aspects of life um, are not the same after COVID, right? And so how many times did we as, as human beings stop and appreciate the simple things that we had granted to us every single day? Um, uh, and so, th you know, this should be really a time for us to, to reflect, to, to see that it is a second chance for us to take into account and appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis for years over years over years has granted us um, to allow us to, to look at those simple mundane actions of life and say, man, that is actually a blessing that piece of my life is truly a blessing, right? That ability for me to just get in the car and go to, to, to my parents' house and kiss my mother on her forehead or kiss my father on his hand, that that act in and of itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because many of us can't do that because our parents are high risk or out of just the protection for them, we, we try to stay away. And so... Um, what I, you know, I just want to share an experience that I went through that really has changed my perspective as well. In addition to not only COVID, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, a couple weeks ago tested, uh, you know, my wife and I with our two-year-old child falling out of a window, right, at the house, which was 10 to 12 feet, a full story falling on, on cement and out of the, the ultimate mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he essentially walked away with, with very minor injuries. Um, and that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and every time, you know, I kind of take a step back and I, I think about it and I say, you know, within a split second, my entire life, my wife's entire life, our family's entire life could have changed. Right? Because there are many scenarios and situations that you can run through to say this could have easily happened or this could have easily happened or this could have easily happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of protected that entire situation, but did it in a way that still shocked the system so that you can wake up and understand that at any given moment, we as human beings are fragile beings. We are we are not self-sufficient from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so by, by, by giving that blessing of a second chance, all of the times now that I reflect on that, you know, my two-year-old would come to me and, and start crying or throw a tantrum or be angry or want to spend time with me as I'm in a meeting or I'm working or I'm doing stuff and I would say, I don't have time for you to, uh, today. I don't have time to do this right now. You know, I can't give you a hug. I can't do, you know, I can't give you a kiss or to be annoyed with those aspects of, of, of what our children do. Um, now, every, every one of those um, uh, nuisances, right, that, that previously uh, would annoy or, or, or put us at unease, you know, the alternative of that is that you don't hear those noises. You don't, you don't have that child come and ask you, can you give me a hug or bother you during a meeting or, right? So the alternative is that it's not there. And so the moment that it's gone, you start to step back and reflect. And I'm like, I wish that my kid would come and, and knock on the door at this moment, right? As your life starts to then progress after a, a cat catastrophic event, you start to then think of all of those times and you say those were blessings those were 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 winds of mercy that i neglected that i turned my back towards and so these second chances that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, many of us in life if we step back and reflect upon them um, should help us to appreciate what we have for today because tomorrow is not guaranteed what you had today is not guaranteed for you tomorrow uh, your own life, your family's life, the people around you, your loved ones, your job, your, your health, everything, every single day you can wake up 
and something about your life can be substantially different. And so taking that step back and reflecting on what you do have today and taking the opportunity to appreciate it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then increased, protects it. And then on top of that, he increases it. And we know that this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he tells us in, in Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14 in the Quran, where he says, uh, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has proclaimed to his creation that indeed if you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return will increase you in that which you've shown him gratitude for. So the, the, the concept of shukr, the concept of gratefulness, the concept of gratitude is not just lip service. It's not just a concept of, of saying that you appreciate something or knowing in the bottom of your heart that you really appreciate it, but then there's nothing else in the, in, in the real world that manifests that appreciation and that gratitude. And so when we, when we get these shocks to the system, you then really step back and say, you know what, every single moment that I have with this aspect of my life, um, Ya Allah, thank you for that. And then you start to use that aspect of uh, that blessing. You start to use that blessing as a reminder for you as a human being to break away from the shackles of, of just normal human behavior, which is to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to forget your blessings, to forget the things that, you, that happen every single day, the routines of your lives, and to break away from that and be become a person of dhikr, a person of remembrance, a, dhikr, a person that is of the dhakirin, which is an attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates in the Quran, an attribute of a believer that is elevated. And so once we become of the dhakirin, we become ones that don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Dawood, you know, alayhi salam, there's narration. Some say it was Dawood, alayhi salam. Some say it was Musa, alayhi salam. There's different narrations um, of this, of this, interaction or this conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but one of these blessed prophets, they asked Allah, oh Allah, how do I show you gratitude? How do I thank you? When, when being thankful to you in and of itself is something that is worthy of me showing you gratitude, right? Ibn al-Qayyim wrote about this, this, this statement um, uh, of the beautiful prophet where he said, Kayfa ashkuruk, Ya Allah, how do I show you my gratitude? When me being able to recognize that you are deserving, that you one exist, right? That in and of itself is a blessing that we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists because the majority of the world does not believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, right? Well, akhtar la yashkurun, right? That most people, most creation does not, uh, does not believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. So one, that's the first blessing is that we even recognize that Allah exists. Two, the next blessing is that you even recognize that what you have or what you've been given or this piece of, of world that you are thanking him for actually is attributed back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not attributed to yourself. That it wasn't something that you yourself did within your own self that is deserving uh, of, of having this or being worthy of having this blessing. But rather it is an attribute back to Allah to say, it was only from him subhanahu wa ta'ala that I actually have this blessing. It is only a, 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 um, a extension of Allah's mercy that I have this. So that's the second recognition of saying it's not you. Like Qarun, Qarun said about himself, everything that he was given, all of the blessings that he was given, he said that those are because he worked hard. It was because of his own intelligence, his own hard work that led him to the blessings that he has. He didn't attribute it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is a, an, uh, the epitome of showing uh, 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 ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not attributing the right uh, return of blessing back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the second one is that this prophet was recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is deserving of gratitude because he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also recognizing that the blessing he has is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the third one 
is that as a human being, you even recognize that you should be showing gratitude, right? Many people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says multiple times in the Quran, many people don't show gratitude, right? They don't even think that they need to show gratitude, that they're entitled to something in this world and everything that they've been given, they've been entitled to, to be given and that they shouldn't uh, in return do something to show their, their gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's what he was saying to Allah. He said, Ya Allah, how do I thank you when me thanking you in and of itself deserves me to thank you even more? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to him. He says, Kadalika shakartani, right? That's how you've, you've thanked me. By you even recognizing all of these stages of gratitude for you to even know all of these things, you, in, you have remembered me, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells him that the signs of gratitude is that you always remember me and don't forget me. For if you remember me, you have thanked me. And if you forget me, then you have truly shown me uh, uh, ungratefulness, right? You haven't shown me the gratitude that I deserve. And so that is the beauty that we as believers should live with which is that one, we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source and the essence of everything, of all creation, of all life. There is nothing without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remove Allah, you remove yourself. The moment you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have wiped yourself away from history. You have wiped yourself out of creation. Uh, without, without the recognition of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, you recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of your blessings, right? That we recognize that Allah is the source of our blessings. And then and third, that you have the ability to even remember that, uh, that you should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are multiple layers to this gratitude. And so a beautiful symbol of this, um, yes, inshallah. We'll be able to end. Um, I'll open it up for questions uh, shortly, inshallah. Um, so this then brings the beautiful manifestation of, of this reminder is that is that of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Right? Sulaiman alayhi salam is the son of Dawood alayhi salam. And they are uh, one of the two, though they are the two kings who were also prophets. Right, so they were given the, the blessings of the worldly life, and they were also given the blessings of spiritual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and direct revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, I, in their in, in Sulaiman's um, position of king, uh, he was he was very fond of horses, right? And he's very beautiful, and there's different you know, commentary on what types of horses are these, but for, for our purposes, if we think about them as just beautiful race horses, he had a fondness for, for, for these horses. And so some people brought him horses and he spent time with them and, and just seeing them and, and, and assessing them and, and, and uh, um, you know, wiping them down and, and, and just being with them and appreciating their beauty uh, to the point that he, forgot his salah. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. And he, you know, Sulaiman himself recognized that he had forgotten this. And he said, Inni ahbabtu hubb al khayri an dhikri rabbi. He said, indeed, I have, I have preferred the blessings or the good in this world uh, above the remembrance of my Lord. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tested him by putting on his throne a dead body, right? Just a, a, a body that looked like Sulaiman, but removed the kingdomship from Sulaiman himself. And so the people went about their business in the same way. They didn't even, they didn't even uh, recognize that Sulaiman salam wasn't there. And so by him seeing the lack of disruption that happened to his kingdom by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removing him and replacing him with essentially an empty body, um, it, it caused him to reflect on his worth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, that all of us are only worthy of anything in this world, of any prestige, of any name, of any uh, blessing or position because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us there. The moment Allah wants to remove us from that, we have nothing, right? We have nothing. 
يعني ورفعنا لك ذكرك right Allah subhanahu wa taala tells the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we have elevated your name right because of his connection to Allah subhanahu wa taala his name was elevated through the ranks of history that no one will ever forget who Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was and that we will always praise him after we say his name and so this is the same thing all of us. Are a a byproduct of the barakah or the the blessings or the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, where He puts us in a specific station in a specific position. The moment we forget that and Allah removes us, we are nothing. We have nothing, right? And so this is what happened to Sulaiman Alayhi Salam. And so he recognized how feeble he was in comparison to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and how much in need of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala he is. That he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for his forgiveness. He said, "Rabbi al-Firli, Oh Allah, please forgive me." But then he went further, and he did something that many of us wouldn't, you know, think to do. And he said, "Rabbi, Rabbi al-Firli, wa habli mulkan la yambari li ahad min baghi." And he asked Allah. He made a du'a to Allah. He made a prayer to Allah. He said, "Forgive me, O Allah, and give me a power that you will never give any human being after me." Right, that you will never entrust with any other human being. And so, typically, when we make mistakes, we try to rectify our mistakes and and try to shy away from the positions of power, so we don't get ourselves tested again. But Sulaiman alayhi salam, because of his connection to Allah and his his, he was a wab. Allah subhanahu wa taala called him a one who constantly returns back to Allah. He didn't want to shy away from the responsibility. He actually wanted more responsibility on himself. To make sure that he can uh, remember Allah, that he can show gratitude to Allah, so that he can be closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So he wanted more responsibility, and so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave him the greatest powers of all, which is the ability to to talk to uh, the animals and to control the jinn and to control the wind and the elements of this world. Allah gave him something that he's never given any creation before or after, and so what this then shows us. As we move further in the journey of the Quran, is that this became this blessing that he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for, as a result of him forgetting and neglecting his responsibility to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because he was overtaken by the joys of this world. He asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for more blessings so that he can use that as a means to come closer to Allah. And so, how do we know that that worked? Because in Surah Namid, in Surah Namid, uh, Surah number twenty-seven in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us this story that Sulaiman alayhi salam and his soldiers were marching uh, through the through through a a part of the land, and as they were, and you're talking about thousands of soldiers and noise and everything happening and chaos around you, and Sulaiman alayhi salam he stopped all of his his soldiers from walking. Because he heard a sound, he heard a sound of a small ant telling and crying out to the rest of the colony of ants, telling them, "Adhulu masakina kum la yhtimanna kum Sulaiman wa Junoodu." That, oh, oh, uh, colony of ants, enter into your homes so that you don't get destroyed by the 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 armies of Sulaiman. You don't get stomped on. You don't get killed. And so this statement. The ability for Sulaiman alayhi salam to actually be able to understand and comprehend this small ant caused him to stop all of his soldiers from moving. The thousands of soldiers that were there and all of the chaos from happening, he stopped it. And Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us and describes for us the situation. He says, "فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكَ مِنْ قَوْلِهَا وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ." وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمةك في عبادك صالح. Allah سبحانه وتعالى describes to us that he smiled from the statement of this ant, and he said to Allah سبحانه وتعالى he said, Oh Allah, give me the ability, right? أو زعني like grant me the ability to recognize that I need to show gratefulness and gratitude to you for these blessings. أن أشكر نعمتك عليه. Oh Allah, give me the ability. To thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon me and on my family. وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا and then he asks Allah and oh Allah give me the ability to do good deeds to to work righteous acts. 
And then, وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ And enter me into your mercy with all of your righteous believers. Right? And so what we see by, from this is the result of having this added responsibility of more blessings to be a means for us to actually remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And so this was Sulaiman alayhi salam's second chance. Right? And for me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have taken my child away, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned him safely. That gives us now every moment that we have with our two-year-old, every second that with him is a blessing. And that by seeing him crying, take a step back and reflect and say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, help me to show gratitude to you for what you have given us. So rather than finding the, the negative in this, think about the alternatives and that allows us to actually see more of the blessings. And so my brothers and sisters, really my message for you today is to take a step back and just reflect on what you have, right? Many of us are struggling. Many of us have illnesses. Many of us have people that we have lost. Many of us are going through many tests. You know, we've lost our jobs. We've lost our incomes. We've lost just our sustenance. But I want you to take a step back and still reflect on what other then the tests that you're going through, what other blessings do you still have in your life? And what taste, what can you learn from the absence of certain blessings, right? What are the lessons that you can gain from the absence of these blessings that will make you a better person once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to return those blessings back to you? How do we, how do we take on that extra responsibility and, and really learn from Sulaiman alayhi Sometimes we make mistakes. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to actually give us more blessings to allow us to come closer to him, to be better people, to be better parents, to be brother, better children, better siblings, better human beings in general. And inshallah, that will help us have a better, uh, 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 a better perception of what's to come tomorrow. So let's not take for granted what we have today, but actually take a step back and reflect on it every Every single day, try to reflect on the blessings that you have and, and take a moment to try to embed the gratitude that you have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he's given you. Try to embed it in the actions that you do every single day. And then hopefully what comes tomorrow is a greater blessing. And every day after that becomes a greater blessing because you're already reflecting on the true blessings that you have the day before. And so we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts us and forgives us for our shortcomings and and protects us and, and does not test us with losing our faith, does not test us with losing our family members, our loved ones, does not test us with losing our sustenance, but rather we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly allows us to take moments to reflect and to show him gratitude and that he increase us, increases us in all that he has given us to allow us to become people who are closer to him, to make us of the shakirin, to make us of the ones who are grateful, to make us of the zakirin, the ones who are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, and to make us ones who have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name on our tongues. Um, and so I'll, I'll stop at that and, and open it up for any questions if there are any. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Uh, Brother Uthman, I'm not seeing any questions. If anyone has any questions, they can put them in the chat or in the anonymous um, question and answer section. So while we wait for questions, I just want to take a minute to thank you for that wonderful presentation. Jazakallah.